Hello, everyone. It's Leo, and you are on Cinecast. Today, I invited someone that's very special to me, and I think that she will fit right in with this theme, and it's Nobles Tea. Hello, I'm Nobles Tea. I'm a book designer by day and a magical girl enthusiast by night. This is the first time I don't do a Cinecast focused only on Precure, and we're going to talk about our stories with magical girls. And I know that, you know, T is a very, very big magical girl fan, right? I super <laughs> spent so many hours watching so many different magical girl animes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've been thinking today and I like, we've known each other for quite a while now, right? We go way back, mm -hmm. like on, I think we met on Tumblr, isn't it? Yeah, I definitely found your YouTube videos via Tumblr, and I guess I interacted via the comment section and then also DM'd you on Tumblr. Yeah, oh my god, it's been such a long time since I don't log in on Tumblr. You know, it, it was a good it was a good spot to... I, I love doing GIFs and, you know, talking about Magical Girls there. But Absolutely. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I thought that for this theme, you would be the best person because every time I mention a Magical Girl show on Twitter or whenever, you know what I'm talking about. I'm there. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna see that show no matter how yeah. amazing or awful it is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like you are an encyclopedia of Magical Girls. Like every time there is a Magical Girl, you're gonna be there. You're gonna be talking about it. You're gonna have an opinion on it. You know about that, and you know I, I love that about you, and it's Aww. it's it's really incredible. Same. I feel like even the moments where you and I have different opinions, hearing your opinion, I just feel like you very respectfully say this is how this character is, and I'm like, you know what? You know what? I agree with them. I agree with them. <laughs> oh my god, that's good to hear because you know your opinion is an opinion I value a lot as well. So oh. you know every time I'm like. Uh, what do I think about this? You know, I love hearing your opinions on things because I don't know. It just it just feels right. You know, I, it just feels right. Got that connection. And, uh, yes, exactly. I, I feel that. And, you know, one thing I remember is that I received a letter from you all the way from United oh, States yeah. to Brazil. And there was a character in that in that the in the letter. Like it, it's one of the characters. It's one of oh, your my, characters. My girl. Oh, yeah, it's um my, my main girl, me and my um previous partner made together. Very special place in my heart. Oh my god, she's she's so adorable. And you know, your art is also something I absolutely love. And I love, you know, watching your streams on Twitch and see you draw. Oh, it's thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, any let's let's start by like trying to remember our first memories as Magical Girl fans. Like, do you remember, like, the first time you saw a Magical Girl in any type of media? I absolutely remember being, like, seven years old and sneaking downstairs to go to the TV to watch After Hours Cartoon Network Toonami to see Sailor Moon or Cardcaptor Sakura. Oh, my God. Yeah, I... We here in Brazil, we also had the same, um, the same build. I don't know. Like Cartoon showed those two series back to back, Sailor Moon and Cardcaptor Sakura. That was like, that was really something. I, it really connected with me as well. But I don't know. I've like, you are younger than me, right? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm younger than you. Yeah, no, you're definitely younger than me because, like, as you're saying, you're talking about Cardcaptor Sakura and Sailor Moon, and you were seven years old. I think that, like, when I, when Sailor Moon and Cardcaptor Sakura started here, I was already a teenager, you know? Uh. And uh, I, I still, I'm still not really sure what my first magical girl was because, like, definitely knowing what a magical girl is and following it it was probably sailor moon but i remember when i was very young i was still a kid magic night hey earth aired here uh on mornings and i watched it i Jealous. didn't know yeah i didn't even know if what an anime was you know i didn't know the difference and i watched that show i think it was my first 
because Sailor Moon also aired here when I was a kid, but it was in a channel that I didn't have at the time. So I only watched it when it came to Cartoon Network. Oh, and the well, first, <laughs> yeah, and the first season never came to Cartoon Network here in Brazil. I don't know about there, but it started in Sailor Moon R. And now, now I think about it, I don't know. I very vividly remember the one I, I'm blanking on it, which probably was R. The one with the Pegasus, um, Helios, was the one Super. that I remember most vividly. Okay, oh, super. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I like. I remember that when I was a very young kid, I had some Sailor Moon stickers and I had no real idea which show that was because I never was like, I was never able to watch it. But I remember I had like some big stickers of some of the characters and I used to put them on my notebooks and I used to take them to school like very proudly. And I would love those characters so much, even without actually watching the show, you know? And I remember a very like this is a very big memory i have there was a, a magazine that was released here telling all of the stories in of all of the seasons of sailor moon before sailor moon started in cartoon network and i read that magazine i i man you got the spoilers yeah i i read every i knew every single thing that was going to happen because you know at that time i didn't have internet i didn't even have a computer so I spent so much time reading that magazine and learning about the characters and learning about the plot. That magazine was so detailed. It was so good. It was a short magazine. It was like very short. It looked like kind of a comic, but it was awesome. And I like, I still remember that vividly, vividly because it was probably the first time, like I was a kid and I, when I was young, I didn't really understand that, but I liked those things that were very feminine, you know, and I enjoyed that a lot, but there weren't that many type of media, you know, especially for boys. And like, oh, definitely. Yeah. The media that, that were there, they were like, there was a big stigma that boys cannot like that. And obviously there is Ooh. stigma with um, magical girls and especially Sailor Moon when I was a kid, but I, I don't know, I didn't notice that, you know? And I, I just felt so happy and contemplated with very feminine characters, with feminine costumes, you know? Mm -hmm. That really impacted me when I was a child. I feel like I had the opposite effect, but coming to a same place where I grew up and all of the shows and cartoons that centralized around girls were typically like, she's in high school and she loves a guy, but she can't talk to him. And those were all fine and good, but the media was super saturated with that. And so when I came across like Sailor Moon, I'm like, oh man, look at these girls kicking butt and defeating evil. Like I've been waiting for this opportunity. Yeah, that that's really something that captured, like this is, I don't, I don't know if we can say that this is the essence of Magical Girls, but like, this is something that really captured captured me when I was young, you know, and all those colors and they're so different from each other. You know, the sailors, they're very different from each other. I remember mm -hmm. when I, when I was very young, my Chibi Moon was my fave because she was all pink. And then I watched the show and I'm like, oh my God, how did I like her? I do that with so many characters. I'm like, this is the prettiest character. And then I watch the series and I'm like, this has become my least favorite character. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know that that experience of watching something, like at least for me, like I read everything about Sailor Moon, and then I watched the show. It was such a different experience than nowadays. Like when you do the both things together, like I cannot say like I love spoilers for Precure, for example. Like even before the series starts, I'm there. I'm looking for the, the cure, the mid-season cure. Even before the season starts, I'm looking for her. I'm looking for clues. I'm looking for everything. Like, this is something I love doing. But I think that with Sailor Moon, like, it was more or less like this because, you know, I, I knew everything that happened with it. And cool kid on the block. <laughs> not really. Because, you know, at, at when I was young, I was very ashamed. Not ashamed, but I, I, I don't know the right word. I was like not really comfortable sharing the fact that I was a big fan of Sailor Moon. I had some friends that nowadays are like my best friends that we both were gay. So I knew that. And we talked a lot about Sailor Moon. We talked about, about those 
more girly shows, but I couldn't share that with lots of people. Because when I did, you know, lots of bad things used to happen. But that was kind of a refugee to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, liking frills and glitter and sparkles, that was a refugee to me. Like, nowadays, I have a very different view on how those shows are like very, very feminine and everything has to look pretty and everything has to look beautiful. But to me as a kid, that was something that was very important. We feel you on that. I, I definitely can relate to being a little ostracized as a kid, but mine was more based on girls. If they hear I liked anime would just be like, oh, she's a child. She needs to grow up. She needs to like makeup and everything and hurry up and grow up already. Guys think that you're watching something not appropriate. So I was just hit with both sides. And I did have one friend who I could sit in the corner with the playground and just like talk about anime with and be like, I like magical girl shows and she's like, that's okay. And I'm like, thank God. It's nice when you have someone that can, that you can open up to, especially when you're a kid, you know, like, I don't know, like I was, when I was very young, I used to like those things and I used to share them to everybody. And then I learned with time that there are some things you can't share because you're going to be made fun of, as you said. Yeah. But it's nice when you have someone, you know, like to be able to talk and to share. I Like, I, I think that, it's so nice, at least to me, I don't know. I, I feel very at home talking about magical girls on the internet nowadays. I feel like apart from some uh, some controversial issues, especially around magical girls shows like Madoka, I feel like everything can be shared, everything can be talked about. And I don't know. I, I just feel like there is no big disrespect in most times. So I like the the experience of being a magical girl fan nowadays online. I feel like we grew up in a really good time period for this kind of thing because I definitely as a kid I felt super alone. Even some of my interests I couldn't relate a lot with a lot of my friends. But being slowly acclimated to the internet as I grew up and being able to communicate with people like you and stuff and share and just be like, wow, this moment in this anime was so cool. And these girls were so cute when they like kicked butt and stuff and everybody like, yeah, I agree with you. That was so cool. Yes. Oh my God. It's, it's hard. You know, even, even nowadays that anime is super popular, it's not that easy to, to find magical girl fans out there. I don't know. Like it, it's, it's very easy to find anime fans, but you know, when you're talking about magical girls, it's more of a niche. And I believe, I don't know, like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to share something. Um, I was getting to know someone last year and we were talking about anime and that person said that he loves anime and oh my God, anime is so good. And we were talking about lots of different shows that we liked and such. And obviously I always share this nowadays. Like I said, I'm a very big Magical Girl fan. And even if you look at my Tinder profile, like I think it's, it's not, um, it's not something I did because I wanted to do. It just happened to be like that. I think all of my pictures, or I'm I'm holding a Sailor Moon, um, a Sailor Moon yes. figure, or, or I am wearing a Sailor Moon T-shirt because I have like yes. four or five different Sailor Moon T-shirts here. But you know, we were talking, and then I shared that I like Magical Girls. And the first question he asked me was, "Did you watch? Did you watch Madoka Magica? And wow. I was like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> like, oh, and he was like, oh my God, this show is so good. It's like so different from all of the magical girl shows and it breaks so many stereotypes and such, you know, and I was listening to that and, you know, I really wanted to say something different and say right. like, look, this is not really like it, you know? But, you know, I just said like, oh yeah, I, Madoka Magica is definitely very good. I didn't want to get into like an argument, not really an argument, but, you know, talk about it. Because I don't know, I feel like I've seen lots of people say this, but it feels like nowadays people think that magical girls are Sailor Moon Precure style or Madoka Magica style. And yeah. that's it, basically. But the genre is so rich. It's so I big. Know. It's so huge. There are so many great shows out there waiting to be discovered or rediscovered that don't fit into any of those molds. I know. I mean, you personally, I know, are a huge Utena fan, which is a pretty good 50-50 on being dark, but also being traditional magical girly with some of those tropes. Yes. 
Oh my God. I think Utana is really incredible. You know, I watched Utana and when I remember when I went to my first anime convention and at least here in Brazil, anime conventions are very big and there were at the time lots of bootleg DVDs for every single show you could imagine. Oh, dang. That there were fan subbed at the time, you know? And I fan bought... Subbed. Yes. And I bought an Utana collection. And then I, I watched all of it when I was like 18 or something. And then I, I watched it again this year. And, you know, it, it's like 20, 24 years apart, you know? Oh my God, I'm old. 24 <laughs> years. No, not 24. 14. Oh my God, I can't math. 14 years apart from watching it for the first time and watching it again. And like now that I'm older and so like I can see so much more in Newton. I can, I can understand it so much more, but it's really a series, at least the anime, that you have to pay a lot of attention. Oh, you gotta watch that thing like multiple times to catch all of the stuff that's going on, oh, all of the God. metaphors. Exactly. And there are some episodes in Utana that are uh, recaps. Definitely. But they add so much, like in, in the middle of the recaps, there are things happening. And so you can't skip recaps, especially there, mm -hmm. there's especially one episode in which Utana is, is on a room, like a hotel room with someone, and you don't know who that person is, and she's talking to that person. That episode is probably one of the strongest episodes. I don't know if you remember that. I think but, I'm also like 10 years out since I've seen Utena and I need to rewatch it. I did oh, watch, though, yeah. The Adolescence again because I really love the movie. Oh, my God. The movie's amazing as well. It's another like it's another show full of metaphors. And like I think that storytelling wise, the movie is very, very creative. It's even Definitely. more creative than the anime because like I, I don't know. I'm always going to defend the anime because the right. anime is Oh my God, I, I just can't. <laughs> it's one of my favorite shows ever. And, you know, like there is this big debate on the internet as well if Utana is actually a magical girl or not. I'm always going to defend and say it is because, like, I'm open for anybody being in the magical girl category. I'll take it. Exactly. And she, like, she has a transformation and even a transformation song. Like, I don't know. Like, a song. I, I, I just can't even start talking about it because like I, I would probably <laughs> spend the whole night we need us in a cast Utena. just for Utena. <laughs> oh my god this is such a good idea we could do it I mean, after you rewatch it we can do this after you rewatch it we can do this because girl this show is everything to me i gotta find the easiest place to watch it because i will be honest i watched on youtube three parts sub espanol oh my <laughs> i i feel you we all went there we all like the old anime fans. The golden days. There. Yeah. Oh God. But yeah, I can help you with that. You know, after this, I can I can really help you with that. Never mind. I can help you with that very easily. But uh, you know, I think one thing that I like a lot about Utana is like this discussion of identity and what's expected of you and who you are and tradition. Like I think that. The biggest uh, thing that Utena left me with is the idea of tradition and how tradition can, you know, if you follow it strictly because you need to it to follow it and not really think about it and, you know, completely uh, nullify your essence because of tradition, it can really, really affect you. And sometimes tradition is, is on you and you're not even noticing. You know, like mm -hmm. your actions are so based on tradition that you're not even paying attention to it. I love that about Utena. I think that's my favorite thing about it. I mean, the opening monologue alone is so inspirational where it's like, here's this girl who lost her prince and she's going to be the prince now. But is that a good idea? Find out next time on Utena. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like everything about this show is really incredible. And like... As I, as I was saying, um, I think that in the Magical Girl realm, there is space for lots of types of narratives. And, you know, like Ut even Utena and Sailor Moon and Madka Majka, they're all more or less combat oriented. But when we think about the or origins of Magical Girls, we see lots of Magical Girls that are just Magical Girls 
to make others happy and to help others in their daily routines. Absolutely. I mean, I've recently have been trying my hardest to watch all magical girls in order, and I'm trying to get as many episodes of Mahosukai Sally, which is very hard. But it's basically the first magical girl series, and it's magical girl Tom and Derry with this girl who's like, I'm going to protect my friends against the forces of evil, but the forces of evil are common problems you'd find in Japan. <laughs> yeah, and that's amazing, you know, like to to look back and see how much the genre has evolved. The genre is so big that it it has parody, it has like serious magical girls and magical girls for children, magical girls for adults. You know, I, I don't know, like even if you don't like magical girls, you're gonna you're probably bound to find a magical girl show you're gonna like. You're gonna like one of them. I like to think for me, having seen so many different types of magical girl series, it's like you're at a table with a thousand different cakes. And sometimes I'm going to sit over here and I'm going to want my vanilla bland cake or traditional magical girl series. Other times I'm going to walk over there and I'm going to get like the pineapple upside down, Madoka magical <laughs> one that's just it's a little darker, but I just I want a little pizzazz in my life. But I'll go back to the vanilla because I'll need it eventually. The pizzazz is going to be too much. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And... I don't know how your experience with Madoka was, but I watched Madoka when it was airing and it was airing during the earthquake in Japan. And during that time, Madoka went on a hiatus in like, it was, we were just missing two episodes, I think. And it stopped. I definitely remember that. I also watched it when it aired. Oh my God. It was so hard. It was so hard because it, it was when the big twist happened right 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 when that episode 10 dropped oh my god it was so hard waiting for that and you know i don't know about i think you can relate to this as well because i'm going through that with magia record magia record ended oh. like girl like how can you end in something like this saying that it's going to be a next season with no date whatsoever I feel so bad because we have the app game here and I have played the app game. So oh. I know what happens. Oh, you know what happens. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I'm so scared. I'm, I'm really scared to, to actually learn what happens because that ending was really strong to me. But the, the game isn't available here in Brazil, so I, I know, can't petition to it. bring it to Brazil. I'm sorry, oh, what? God. Why not? You know, I, <laughs> I, I think that the, the English... Magia Record Twitter page must hate me because I'm always commenting them. <laughs> Please well, release the game. The squeaky wheel gets clean. <laughs> Please release it on Latin America. And no, but yeah, so far, not good. You know, right. in a way, it's it's not that bad because I'm not a I'm not a very good gotcha game player. I don't know no, how I'm, to control. I'm awful. It. I had to put it down. I did I did go on hiatus from it because I'm like. I'm going to start spending real world money on this and it's going to exactly, be a bad time. Yeah. I did it, I think, like two times with the King of Fighters, one of the King of Fighters games. And I said, no, never again. Never again. Me, that was me with Love Mickey. Those dress up games, man. They just oh they God, have so many it. outfits and I want love them all. Mickey. Yeah. And, you know, talking about outfits, it's also something that's very big on Magical Girls, you know, uh, outfits and designs. You know, I feel like the creators of Magical Girls, they have so much fun creating them because the design, there are some designs that are more like clear and simple, but mm -hmm. some others are totally out there and I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, I think that's one of the beauty between um, po Poela Magica Medica and um, Magia Record is playing that game, you get to see so many different random artists commissioned to do so many different unique outfits and see all sorts of different like cultural inspirations and design inspirations, time periods. And I just, it's very refreshing. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. And uh, like, if you had to choose some shows, like that were your favorites in terms of designs and costumes on the top of oh. your mind, could you say some names? Um, I will say I love sweets outfits. I loved how ridiculously ornate they were. That, that's got a like soft spot in my heart. Mm -hmm. I love the Star Twinkles uh, Zodiac outfits. Oh my god, that was so beautiful. Also, um, Cardcaptor Sakura, just because 
Tamoya's my girl, and she just went ham with outfits every other episode. <laughs> yeah, clamp, right? Clamp. Clamp, you when you like I when you're talking about beauty and designs, I don't know. Like clamp is always on top of my mind. Every panel of their manga is just an absolute masterpiece. And I do not know how these old women like pump these comics out like nonstop. Yeah, exactly. I have no idea either. You know, as you, as you mentioned, I mean, I remembered Clamp. I think that one of my favorite Magical Girls in terms of designs is a Magic Knight here. I, I don't know what Clamp was thinking because they have a thing for balls in that because every single character has some balls in some places in of their costumes that are like why but it's so it looks so good and i absolutely love it and one thing i love about magic knight hey earth is that uh they get to evolve their uh their uniforms and their magical girl uniforms as time goes by as, as they get stronger as they get more powerful and they learn more things their um their designs are they, their designs evolve and they change, and I find that incredible. You know, I the last at least for the first right, I'm I'm rewatching it right now, and uh, at least like the last time the the costume evolves in the first part of the anime is so beautiful, and you know, just simple colors, red, blue, and green. Mm -hmm. It's just there, and it's so amazing. I love it. It's one of my faves. You it's love a good outfit upgrade. Yes, I love it. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, I'm not, I'm not here for the hug to break your up uh, upgrades because I don't know. True. Like that's too much. <laughs> sometimes I think, like, I, I like the idea of magical girls like getting new powers and changing their costumes a little bit, but sometimes it gets too much. I think. Yeah, there's, there's people who are like, we're going to go far. I have that with idol anime. I feel like idol anime outfits can get really ridiculous. And I'm like, I'm going to enjoy them from afar. <laughs> well, but that, you know, in a way that can happen with idols in general as well. You know, I, I, I used to have my idol, like, craze. I'm still a big Hello Project fan. But I remember when I was getting into Hello Project and I watched their shows and I was like, what the hell they're wearing? Who the hell designed this? <laughs> I, you know, like I had no idea, but you know, nowadays I, I understand idol culture more. Yeah, I think uh, there's occasionally a Love Live outfit that's way out of there, but I've also lived with enough live, live, blah, Love Live that I've gotten used to it. But I think someone put out a tweet where they're like, I can't stand whoever makes all the outfits for Love Live. And they put a picture of Coterie and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You just get so used to it after a while. Yeah, I, I think that's that's basically it, you know. They, and and that's how I kind of feel about precure upgrades in general. I think most times they're too much and they're too like I don't know. I can't understand what's going on with those costumes. And really? you know, some of them are beautiful, but some of them are. And I don't know what, like they have this fixation with white. They have to use white for most power ups. I think that, yeah, and I think that some of the power ups that are not white are like my favorites. You know, like the Star Twinkle power up, like they are their own color, and there's not this big amount of white in their costume. And I'm like, thank God, please bring me colors. Bring me colors. I agree. I think it's probably reminiscent of roman ideal looks for like what a god would look like is probably where that's stemming from but i mean heart catch and happiness are good but their final forms could be they could have some color in there we could we'd dab a little bit of color in there yeah but you know in those cases at least their costumes are still wearable in a way i think you know they, they're like they're it's basically their costumes but with a white take on it and kind mm -hmm. of an edge to it but when do they get big dresses? I, oh, man. I don't know. Like, you know, it could be different. It could be different. At least it's not one of those shows that the girls get stronger and they get, like, less costumes, less costumes, less costumes. <laughs> Trying to hit those markets. Yeah. Appeal to those audiences. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had, like, I remember when someone uh, told me to watch one of those I, I don't remember the name of the show 
uh, but it's a spinoff of Fate, the Magical Girl show spinoff of oh, Fate. Day Prism, Night. Khalid, Ilya. Oh, oh yeah, man. Ilya. Yeah, like I tried to watch that, and you know, when I started, I th I thought, okay, this might be nice. This story kind of, you know, it's getting on a nice groove, and you know, the characters are interesting. But you know, the amount of fan service it really put me off. And that you know, like, that is a show that saw that market where they're like, we noticed that there's a lot of middle-aged men who are watching magical girl shows, and we have this property and we have magic. Why don't we just make something that appeals to them? And that's how that was born. <laughs> yeah, that's that that was kind of scary to me, you know. When I when I first saw it, it was like, oh man, no way. And I just turned it off and I never really got back to it again. You know, there are some Magical Girl shows that have some little fan service here and there, and I don't care about it that much, but there are some others that take it to a whole nother level. And yeah. I don't know, I just don't really enjoy. You know, like, even Madoka Magica sometimes, like, not the anime itself, but especially the mangas, and even Magi oh my God. game, like, you know, there is, there's something there as well that can be a little bothersome. There was actually a lot of controversy around some of the, um, they had a couple of the manga characters guest star in Magia Record. And Kasumi from Innocent Malice, uh, she, her design has a more cover, covered up version, but the original artist was like, you can't put her in this game unless you have the minimum amount of clothing. And she's like 13. Oh, God. <laughs> she was like, why though? Oh, man. And it's interesting because, uh, the character is like Kazumi, as you were saying, the character design in Kazumi is so beautiful. Like the characters are so beautiful, but the costumes are so ugly. And, yep. <laughs> oh, no. Like this person can really draw. You can really see that, you know, the artists are very talented, but, you know, their costume choices. Oh, man. And yeah. you know, Madoka, Madoka is an interesting case because it. Like, it's it's one of the biggest Magical Girl shows, and it's very popular and everything, and it generated mm -hmm. lots of spinoffs, and I, like, I, I try to follow some of them, because most of them get released here in Brazil, and every time a new Madoka, or actually, um, Puella Magi is released, I try to get the manga and read it, and... Same. Most Same. of them, you know, most of them are so bad, and so... Like, yeah, just it's another. There's definitely grains of salt you need to take. I'm there for, like, them expanding the universe, but then there's some that I read, and I'm like, all right, okay. I see yeah. that. I see where we were going with this. I see our market audience. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I, I feel like the only Madoka manga I liked was uh, Suzune Magica. And I'm not here mm. saying that it's amazing, but it's, like, it's good. It's tolerable compared to the others. Because Kazumi, like, Kazumi, I don't know if you've read the whole manga. Absolutely, I own all of them. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I think I can get a little deeper on that. I think that Kazumi's story is so confusing, and the art is also confusing as well. Sometimes I don't understand what's going on. I have to stop and try to guess what is happening there. And, you know, the story itself... It was so confusing and so convoluted that no. And Oriko yep. Magica is another one that I was like, oh, please, no. Just yep. <laughs> no. But there Susan were like Ed gems in there, but for the most part, it was like, okay. Oh, my God. And, you know, sometimes like in Oriko's case, you can see some original characters from Madoka. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm happy to see them and like, okay, work, girl. But it just doesn't work because the writing isn't there. Yeah, there's. I like some of the characterizations that they added to some of the characters, and I liked how that ended and it went full circle. But also, the introduction of Oriko ruins kind of the original series, which a lot of the spinoffs do, where it's like, mm -hmm. if Oriko existed, how is Homura keeping her from messing things up every single timeline? Yeah, you're right. And I, I think that Suzune was basically like the only one I was able to read and enjoy throughout Lee. But, you know, I'm not saying it's a good like or great manga. It's just compared to the other spin-offs, it's my fave, I think. 
I think it's my second fave, but I definitely don't like the designs in that outfit. I'm a Tarte girl. I really like Tarte Magica, but it also looked like the original style of the original series. Yeah. And um, as we were talking about Madoka before, uh, I feel like Madoka... Uh, I don't know your opinion on this, so I'm going to say mine first. I really don't believe that Madoka reinvented the genre and changed it, like you know, completely, or did something that was never done before. Uh, I do think that it was something that made an impact because of its popularity. And because mm -hmm. most people that watched Madoka aren't Magical Girl fans, and they don't know the genre very well, because lots of people say that Madoka is the one that broke the rules and changed the, the idea of being a magical girl but i feel like lots of magical girls have done it before that i just think that madoka got more popular because you know madoka's good you know i like it's awesome and i'm not downplaying it by any means i'm a very big madoka fan i just don't really think that it was the first or it was like so revolutionary i just think it was very popular and it helped popularize the genre and revive the genre again to a public that was not really looking for magical girls i definitely think it's a series that had absolutely great timing because horror as a whole universally was getting more popular i mean you have things like youtube as a platform youtube gaming and playing horror games got very popular people were getting more interested in darker things in the magical world genre had a darker shows, but they were older. Like I think um, definitely Utena had its level of darkness. What's it called? Princess Tutu had its level of darkness. Um, even some of Pretty Cure had some darker themes in a couple of the seasons. And I feel like this just hit at a point where people were like, things are starting to calm down. We're getting less magical girl series. And also normal people are like, I'd like to see a horror version of this basic plot. And it just happened to come at the right moment you mentioning princess tutu i like this is one show i really think that is an example of that you know it's a show that really touches on pretty dark stuff it, it has this the burden of being a magical girl just like in utana as well like utana carries a heavy burden on being the chosen one and being like the, the the one that has the dio's power and everything like there is this big burden on those characters they have to follow up them throughout the story but as you said, those shows are hidden and they're not available everywhere. I think that Princess Tutu is a show that's very niche because Definitely. like, there is this stigma. At least there was, I think. I don't know if this stigma still exists because I'm so into the fandom that I, I don't have this outside view on it. Same. At least the time, like, Magical Girls are for girls. And then you have a show like Princess Tutu that's there uh, bringing a totally different narrative but it's it's a very girly design and combined with a specific type of culture that's also very tied to female which is ballet like mm -hmm. men cannot like ballet you know so it's like niche and then you add another niche to this already like very niche show so this is like this is totally hidden and utana as well like if you if you want to watch utana you can't find it in streaming platforms. And I don't even know if there are DVDs available in some countries. Like in here in Brazil, if you want to watch Utana, you have to pirate it. You can't find it anywhere. And, right. you know, it's 90s. And 90s, they had a very peculiar type of narrative. They had their own timing, their own type of animation. And not everyone's into that. Madoka is a show that came into a different era and with... Fewer episodes because, you know, even Princess Utu and Utana are both like very long shows. Chunky anime. Yeah. And then Madoka Magica just came with 12 episodes. And here you have a very quick story, very deep story as well, discussing lots of things and especially discussing what, it, what, it, what it's like to be a magical girl in this world that not everything's all rainbow, rainbow and flowers. Mm hmm. I also think to touch on um, its shortness, it definitely it came in the era where everybody's attention spans are shorter. And it also, unlike the other ones, made the darkness and the plot twist super clear. Like 
there's definitely a lot of artsy implied metaphors in that show that you can pick up on if you really want to. But if you want the baseline narrative and figure out what in the world happened in that show, it's much easier to digest than trying to look into the deeper meaning to something like Utena, which is very, very rich. I think you said it all. And, you know, after Madoka, lots of other magical girls, like, as I said, like its impact on the genre and on the anime culture, it really shifted because lots of magical girl shows trying to emulate the same vibe appeared later. It's been, for me, it's been a lot of cake, which has some been good, some been great. I think you and I actually, for some of the mid-tier ones, we swapped which ones we concentrated on because I think you got really deep into Raising Project and I got really deep into Maho site. And boy, do I regret getting into Maho site. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that one is a show I remember before the anime came out, one of my friends told me to read the first chapter of the manga and I read it and I was like, I can't. When that part with the, the main character, Aya, I think it was Aya, mm -hmm. and her brother in the bedroom. And I was like, I, I saw oh. that and I, okay, I'm not, I'm not reading this anymore. And I never touched it again until the anime came up. Right. And, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say, like, it's awesome. Oh, my God, it's such a good storytelling. It's not. But it's, I, I believe it's good, you know? Like, it's so dramatic. It's so over the top and so exaggerated. It went hard on the edge. Oh, my God. Like, okay, let's put on some little edge here. And then the whole cup dropped, you know? Like, they, they just didn't hold anything back. And at the end of the day, I liked the experience of watching that anime, but I, I, I still remember that after I finished, I said, okay, I'm going to read the manga now, but I never Don't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as God. Someone, as someone who read the manga, let me tell you, this man can write a really good overarching story, and it's fantastic with great plot twists and really good character relationships, but he's also like, you know what would be really good for this manga? I'm going to take the most depraved anime tropes ever and just shove it in there. When you're thinking things are great, I'm going to make it bad. And I was like, why would you write that? <laughs> Damn, please. It hurt me oh so bad. Oh, my God. No. Oh, no. That's I wish hard. I chose your pass. I, I wish I did what you did where you're like, all right, Raising Project. Interesting, interesting. I'm going to read the manga. And I've enjoyed the manga. And I'm like, man, I should have done that instead. Mm -hmm. I'm a very big fan of Raising Project. Like, very, very big fan. I like it. I, if I were to rank my five favorite Magical Girl uh, franchises, it would definitely be on there. I think I like it even more than Madoka. Because uh, the, the novels are so good. And, like, the anime is good as well. The anime is good as well, but the, the, the novels are on a whole another level. And I feel like one thing I really love about Raising Project is how creative the writer is on writing powers for the magical girls. Like, there are some magical girls there, like, you, you read their powers and you're like, what are they going to do with this? How are they going to fight with this? How, like, how can the, what can this do? Like, there is one magical girl in one of the novels her power is to change her reflection in a mirror. And like, it, it's interesting because that, that's even a, a plot point of hers. Like she's very disappointed in her powers, you know, but then the, she starts training and all. And then like when she uses it and you're like, oh my God, how did this person think of that? You know, and it's very interesting. But, you know, the sad part of Maho Iku is that in every story, at least from the ones I read, because I didn't read all of the novels, every, like, like almost everyone dies. Like, I was going to say, it's going to pull one of those. Yeah, like almost everyone dies. And like some characters stay alive. And, you know, like, for example, uh, I don't know if this, I'm, I'm not spoiling, so I'm not saying names, but the characters that were alive from in the first novel that is the anime series, they still appear. You know, they're, they're still there. They're still fighting and they're still doing magical girl stuff but um it never happened in I, I read the four novels the four first novels in all of them none of my favorite characters survived not even one of them survived you know and the, and in in some of them like there are some novels like 
like in the first one, two survives, and then the, the, in the second one, three survives. And then it seems like it, the number of characters that stay alive, it keeps on growing, you know, but it never happened. None of my faves ever survived in any of the stories. It's definitely me for the anime. Oh my God. I, I think my problem with that series is there wasn't a fantastic overarching story, but let me tell you, the individual character stories and making me like this cast, every single character of 15 and just sitting there and being like, like 10 minutes, I suddenly love this character and it's so rich. And then all their plots intersect so well. And the plot was at the end of the series was so good. Yeah. I think like one of the interesting things about uh, Maho Iku that I feel that not many magical girls use is the idea of changing yourself completely. So you don't know who that person is. Like you see the magical girl, you don't know who's behind because it can be a middle-aged woman. It can be a man. It can be like a very young child. It doesn't matter who the person is in their physical like the physical form when they change into a magical girl they change into someone like completely different and i have no idea why more magical girls don't do that because you can play with so many stuff with this that really sold so much of that anime to me when like you would sit there and be like oh who's this character that's been very malicious and then it reveals and you're like that is not what i expected but i am <laughs> so amazed at how you crafted this this is something that bothered me a lot when i was watching sailor moon because they changed nothing in the 90s True. Oh. they changed nothing and no one recognizes them every kid every kid is like who how can you not tell it's her yeah how who are you oh my god and you know like when i was when i well i don't know if you did but i love the sailor moon live action i don't know if you That's watched it not, i need to watch it man it's like it's bad in terms of quality like, <laughs> it's bad but the story is very good but there is something that sailor moon characters like they have like blue hair and blonde and so like but then in the live action all of them they have black hair and, and you know, that's it. And when they transform, they change the color of the hair and the way the hair is, it's different and it changes you more and, you know, gives you more of the idea of being a superhero that's not really exactly like you are on your daily life. Super smart and a really good use of the theater and your medium right there. Uh, there is also one type of magical girl. I don't know if you've watched many of those, but there is one specific that is like that trope of a, a young girl that turns into an older woman so that she can work or like do like or sing or. Be Are you talking idol. about full moon? Are we talking about full moon? Yeah, not only Full Moon, because there are lots of uh, there are lots of magical girl shows that are like that. But yeah, Full Moon is my fave when it comes to that. But there's like uh, Fancy Lala and the one with purple hair. What's her name? Creamy Mommy. Yes, Creamy Mommy. Yeah, and you know, Creamy Mommy is um, another one of those of those styles of like she's young and then she grows a little bit more so that she can become an idol and such. You know, I tried watching Creamy Mommy and, you know, it's it's a very charming show. Like the style of it is very good, but it's kind of dated because it's like from the 80s. There's like this female rivalry, you know, and there is like a female like rival that's very, very bad. And she does very bad things. The traditional tropes. How I miss these. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, you know, like uh, sometimes we think, oh, we're past that. But then... Sometimes when you, you go when back you, into the fire. You watch those shows, you have to understand they're they're from another time, they're from another era, and things were different. And so like the narratives are obviously going not to be the same as well. But yeah, you know, uh, I think that this is another trope of magical girls, this is another style of magical girls. I haven't seen many of those, but I'm I'm getting there, you know. Like full moon is super important to me in a way full moon was so good i remember my friend lent me the manga and i read it in like a day <laughs> and uh arina tanemura she has some magical girl manga as well i don't know if you've read any of them she like 
one of my favorite manga ever is Kamikaze Kaito Jan. Jan has a special place in my heart. Oh God, this is so good. I love it. And it, it's such a good manga. And unfortunately the anime, like I haven't seen all of it, but from what I've seen, it's completely different than the yeah, manga. Yeah, definitely. I, it's one of those series where I have my opinion on the manga ending and I have an opinion on the anime ending and they kind of diverge in different ways. Like I believe the manga covers why the antagonist is the antagonist much more thoroughly rather than I think like the second to last episode is like, this character was the antagonist all along. And you're like, why? And they're like, we're not going to tell you. Oh, I hate that. Especially when it's on those shows, like we have like 50 episodes. You had plenty of time of telling us their stories. It's we had to do the show. romance, though. Oh, God, please. And this is another trope on Magic Girls. I, I, don't, I don't think this is like a, a, a trope that's used a lot. But Thief Magical Girls, we have Jun and we have that one with the hat. Oh, my God, what is her name? Kaito Sank Tail. That's what it was. Kaito Santale. Yeah. This show, like, I, I haven't read the manga, but the anime, I have watched this anime, like, completely. And I, the anime was good. I, I just hate the ending, but the anime was, was nice, you know? It was nice. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was one of those magical girls that I don't think they do anymore, which is a soul magical girl. There's only that girl, and she is the one. There's not going to be any other helping their solos were very popular in the early days of magical girl series. And it's definitely moved to be like teams and friendship. Like even uh, the newest version of like a Kaito th phantom thief kind of series would be like miraculous ladybug, but that has a huge emphasis on teamwork and friendship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know about you. I like teams better, you know, like in general, I like teams better. I'm Every team time I friendship. Yeah, exactly. Every time I try to find uh, to watch a show that has like uh, one magical girl only, I have to like her very much to be able to go through yeah. it all. Like, what was the Nurse Angel Didica? I don't know if you've seen that one. I have seen pictures, but I have not watched it yet. Because I've watched it, I, I've watched half of it because I've never really, I was never really able to watch it like in a good quality. And like nowadays, very bad quality irritates me kind of, you know, <laughs> I can't watch anything in bad quality. And like the second half of the show was in shitty quality and I've never found it in a good quality and I was never able to finish watching it, but it was only one girl. And, you know, that kind of bothered me because I wanted more. I don't know. Like sometimes I, I, it gets tiring of seeing the, that girl fight all the time and use all the same attack and the same transformation and the same speech. And that's only her. And I don't know. I, I feel that. I definitely think Tiny Me really cared about romance and just having one character because Tiny Me had bad taste. And then I grew up and I was like, you know what? Friendship is really what mattered. Like there were shows where you would watch it for the magical girl aspect. And then there were shows like Shugo Kara was my guilty childhood one where I was like, screw everything that's going on. I care about this really not fantastic love triangle. Oh my God. I'm, I'm feeling kind of bad right now because when I watched Shugo Kara, I was already in college. Girl, I don't I'm feel old. bad. I'm but, old. No, that, that show, though, should have a higher age rating because that was pretty saucy for middle school me. It was. It was. Definitely. And, you know, Shugo, I, I got into Shugo Kata because of idols. Because um, the group that made the Shugo Kata songs was a group I loved back then, which was Buono. And I loved it so much. And I, I remember... Uh, New Buono song came out. It was the, the fourth or third ending. I don't remember from Shugo Kiara. And I was like, okay, I need to see the ending to listen to the song. There you go. I, I listened to the ending and I saw those little characters and I was like, oh my God, this show must be so boring. Cause it's like, I thought it was like kind of like a Pokemon thing, you know? But then when I discovered it was a magical girl show, it turned my life around and I said, okay, I need to watch it. I need to watch it. And then I started watching it. And, you know, I watched everything so fast, like the first season. Because when I was, when I finished, when I started, Shugo Kata Doki was airing. Mm -hmm. and so, like, I got into the first season super fast. And I'm, I'm a super slow watcher. And I got into my, like, I, 
I watched it super fast. Chugokata is very nice. I love Chugokata. I need to rewatch it, not for bad reasons. I just sat there and was like, I just want to see this really not fantastic <laughs> love nonsense go on. But there was actually such a deep plot in there, and the side characters are really important. And Tiny Me just didn't know what she was watching back then because I need to go back and watch <laughs> it for like what was actually there. Yeah. And, you know, like, there is, yes, there is a lot of romance in Shugokata, but as you said, there are lots of other things going on as well. There are lots of other characters and plots and, you know, them discovering their own lives and discovering more about themselves because it's more, it's a lot about personality and, you know, you mm -hmm. embracing who you are. That's basically the message of Shugokata, like very simple, but I loved it. And I, I, there are lots of people that claim for magical boys, Shugokata is there for you. It is that I will. I was gonna say that one definitely came through on a variety of magical boys, and then put them in the show to a point. Aside from maybe like the main two love interests, like the sub, the secondary boy characters just being magical boys were there, and it was chill, and it was fine, and they were friends. And it's not like them being boys took away from the show. It didn't. Yeah, it, it definitely didn't. It was like yeah, I I really liked it. I really liked it. It was a show that I really enjoyed. And, you know, there, there is one of Magical Girls that I have never been able to get into, which is Super Dolly Kachan. I don't know if you've seen that one. I've dabbled, but I have not gotten very far. Yeah, I remember, like, when, when I was younger, it aired here in Brazil as well. And when I was younger, uh, there was a lot of this, like, Oh, we're talking about Magical Girl. So yeah, Super Dolly Kachan is a must watch, you know, in anime magazines and such. I don't know if they were trying to like popularize the show because the, the channel was paying them or something. But, you know, it was a show that I never was, I was never able to actually enjoy. And I don't even know if it fits the criteria of being a Magical Girl because it's more, I feel like this, that was more of a Pokemon thing. But at least here True. in Brazil, it's always sold as a Magical Girl. Mm -hmm. all, all the little outliers that you just kind of have to decide where you're going to put it. <laughs> yes. I remember uh, another show that kind of impacted me, which was when I started downloading anime. And oh my God, I don't, I don't even know if I can say that here because like nowadays it's kind of illegal in some places. But Right, but I'm with you though. Oh yeah. You know, there are some shows that you can't watch unless you download them. Uh, at that time, at least, there weren't streaming websites. So right. that was the only way. And, you know, I remember one of the first Magical Girl shows that I have down, I found by myself, and I was so happy, I was so proud of me, and I downloaded all by myself, was Mermaid Melody. I was about to say, please say Mermaid Melody. Oh, oh my God. yes. Oh, what a show. You know, what I, don't, a show. I don't know if, like, if I were able to watch it nowadays, would I be able to go through it? I don't know. Honestly, it's I don't know. way longer than I remember it being because I did want to rewatch it back in my like early days of college. I was like, I really have fond memories of this. I would really love to rewatch it. And the anime is long and the manga is really short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those 50 something episode series, the first one, because I never really got to finish the second season. But You're not missing much. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, no. Because, you know, there was a nice story there, but the the pace was really bad. But, you know, at the time, I loved the songs. I oh, loved the songs. The songs were so good. Oh. And, you know, it, it's interesting because, as you said, like, I have... This was another show that I was in college. I remember I was at, in my first year of college, and I started watching Mermaid Melody. And this is one of the shows that... I had a great memory of the songs. And then I went to listen to them again, like more recently. And I'm like, well, they're good songs, but where's that emotion? Where is that emotion? I, I don't know. Exactly. It's, I feel it, that. Yeah, it has a lot. I, I think there were lots of memories at the time that I connected with the songs, but the songs themselves, like they're not bad. They're by means, right. by means bad, but you know, they could be. Some things have, don't age well. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's one of those cases. And, you know, at that 
age that there were lots of magical girl shows at that time and we had uh, Parp of Girls. I don't know if you've seen Parp, the, the anime version of Parp of Girls, which is very nice. I, I liked it. It's definitely just... I don't know. I, I watched the original series, so I kind of lost me a little bit on that one. It's its its, its own thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it has you nothing to do them. with the original. Yeah, it has nothing to do with that. I Because I, I still remember when I watched the first episode, and I was like, oh, my God, what am I watching here? This is so bad. But then I, you know, I, my, I have a friend who told me, no, keep watching. You're going to like going. it. It's good. Keep going. And then I kept on going. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I enjoyed it. It was a nice experience to me. Yeah, I, I definitely watched that at a period of time where I had basically my Magical Girl renaissance. I actually couldn't have any access to Magical Girls for a, several years. And in middle school, when I had way too much free time between the end of the school day and then I had to go to swim practice, I started watching anime and I specifically watched all the Magical Girl anime that were in this one AMV called God is a Girl Magical Girl AMV. <laughs> and I I watched, I, I think from that I watched, Kaito was in there, Kaito Jean, um, Mermaid Melody, uh, Power of Girls, a couple other ones were in there, but I will say, which is very ironic for modern day, there was one anime where it was different from the other ones. It wasn't fluffy and pink. These girls were flying through the air. They were doing acrobats. They were kicking so much butt. And I was like, oh man, this one's edgy. I'm going to watch the edgy one. And that would be Futariwa. Oh my God. <laughs> it was the edgy anime back in the day. Oh my. Oh, that's amazing. Like, yeah, I think that Futariwa really got me, you know, like I had more or less the same vibe because like I had a very big prejudice against Precure before I started watching it. I was like, oh my God, what is this anime that thinks is the new Sailor Moon? Why, why is this anime being successful? And it's, it, it's not, you know, I was that type of Sailor Moon fan and I never really got a chance. I, I never really gave a chance to Precure. But when I watched the first episode of Futariwa, I was like, what am I missing? What am I missing? No, come on, I need to lose this. And then the rest is history. Exactly. Oh, man. I think I started watching Futariwa while Max Heart was just starting to air. So I never had that whole like Sailor Moon replacement anything happen yet. I was just like, what's this edgy one that for me being in the West and having no idea how popular it was and having almost no access to it, it was just like, another edgy one i was like this is by some small studio just making an edgy anime girl on the side (laughs) oh yes and yeah like who could imagine that we we would evolve so much here we are and here we are with like i every time there's a new anime season coming up i always look up to see if there is going to be a magical girl show Definitely. And I always try, you know, I, I try sometimes. To oh, watch we, we tried on one. Oh, man. man we, we can talk about special, special ops. Oh, please. <laughs> what was that? Well, I what just, was that? Like, Maho Shoujo site was edgy. But this show was like, all right, so you know how all these shows are taking magical girls, but we're going to throw in like an element of realism. We're going to do this, but we're going to make it like it's war. It's we're in the army. This is combat. And I was like, please don't. And they're like, we're going to have torture. And I'm like, God, stop. I draw. Oh, my God. I I, I don't know about you, but I couldn't watch it whole. I did not finish it. No. Oh, like it was so stupid. And I I don't know, like, as you said about Mahosha Josite, you know, like, it was edgy and it was like over the top and such, but the story was good. And you were, you were curious to see what was going to happen. I had like, to know what was happening. I had to know exactly. how it was going to end. Exactly. And then in, in special ops, at least for me, there was nothing like this. There was, there was a, the, you knew what was going to happen. They implied enough. And then anything else that was there was just watching these girls get absolutely killed. And I was like, I don't think I want to be here anymore. I'm a little uncomfortable. Oh yeah. No, please. Oh no. I last year there was another one that I tried to watch, which is like a magical girl crossing with uh Mechas, which is Grand Bell. Grand Bell? Yes. Yeah. I didn't like that one either, but more of the I think the storyline was very confusing and okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say this. Every time I tried to watch it, I ended up sleeping. So that wasn't oh. really something for me, but 
you know, I appreciate when they try to do something like that because, you know, crossing magical girls with mechas is very rare. It exists, but it's very rare. Rare. Like, I think that the only times I remember it happening is in Ray Earth and Grenbelm. I think I saw it in one other one that I don't know if I could consider it a magical girl, but I can't remember the name of it, where it was about two very Shinto-esque priestesses that would like take these robots and fight and then they end up fighting each other at the end that one also had like that mm. weird here's a mech intro into the series and it just kind of worked yeah that's interesting you know that's not something i usually watch have you seen that um super pig i don't know i don't know if that's the name in english i think i know what you're talking about if it's older than the 90s i probably haven't it's the it's it's from the i think it's from the 90s the japanese name of this show is tonde booting but I here, definitely it, looked it up. The here in Brazil, it uh, it came as Super Pig. It's a girl that turned like when she transformed, she became a pig, and she had mm -hmm. to save people. You know, she had like superpowers, and she had to save people. It's so funny. It's amazing, <laughs> and it has this that nineties style. You know, you look at it and say, okay, this is from the nineties, and I love the nineties style. I think it's my favorite style of like visuals you know i love it i like i like when people were chonkier i don't like that magical girls and new age anime girls look like absolute sticks <laughs> tonde budin's case specifically i have tried to find this show complete on the internet it's it's not available it, it's, it's it so doesn't hard. exist it does not exist it was never fully subbed by any group and i'm so the sad the pain, the pain. I suffer about this every time. And, you know, just mentioning another show that I really wanted to watch completely again is Corrector Yui. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yes, Corrector Yui. I have not seen all of that because I couldn't find enough. Exactly. Like that one, I, f I watched it completely because it aired here in Brazil as well. It was one of my first Magical Girls. But I want to rewatch it and there isn't... It's not available anywhere. It makes me so angry. I feel that. I, I tiptoed into Sasami Magica because it was translated into English on Funimation. But when Funimation went down, I never saw that anime again. And I was like, well, I kind of want to, I only saw like parts of that show. I, I'd like to know what actually happened, but it's impossible to find the full season. Oh, that's sad. And that's, that's a spinoff of Tenshi Muyo, right? Right, which I also need to... I should probably watch that first and then rewatch watch Sasami. <laughs> I don't remember it being amazing, but I remember they like had some kind of plot that I wanted closure on. My 100% soul was like, I just need to know what happened so I can say that I knew what happened. <laughs> you know, when we're talking about Magical Girls, we could stay here like hours and hours. Absolutely. Mentioning our faves and the ones we watched and we didn't like and, you know, all those stuff. But, you know... I'm just happy that we have a genre as amazing as Magical Girls, and it makes us, it's, it makes me so happy, you know, to be able to enjoy this because it's so good. Absolutely, I just more years of the Magical Girl genre, and may it not die out. Yeah, and you know, like nowadays, I think that Precure is my. My lo the love of my life, you know, like this franchise really captured me. And, you know, I just love living Precure, you know, like it's something I never get tired of. It, it, it always stays fresh no matter what, because it, it's always evolving. But at the same time, mm -hmm. we also have like other big franchises that really, I, I, I say that I, I really love. So if I could just name a few, like obviously Sailor Moon is up there together with Precure, you know, I just love it. And I think that lots of parts of me and who I am today is because of Sailor Moon. I remember when I learned that uh, Haruka and Michiru were a couple and they were like open like that in Sailor Moon. And I was like, oh my God, this is really possible. You know, it was one of, I think it was basically the first time that I saw something like that in media. Because I was a child and I thought this is possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, it was so en enchanting and incredible to me, you know? And so I feel like Sailor Moon really shaped me and really helped me.
go through lots of, of stuff. And so like, I'm very thankful that it exists and that it still exists because, you know, it never dies. It's always here with us in some Absolutely. way. Right. And I feel like uh, Utena is also another one that I like when I rewatched it at this time, there were some things that I saw in it that I never saw in anything else and how it makes you think about what you're doing with your life and if that's what really what you want to do. You know, I, I don't know. I'm, I might be philosophing to you too much, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to invite you to rewatch Utena so that we can do a Cinecast on it. We, we're going to watch, we're going to have an Utena Cinecast. Absolutely. Okay, please. So if you had to choose, like, which ones do you think, like, are the ones that impacted you the most? Definitely Sailor Moon from a starting standpoint, just because it was that intro to, wow, girls can do something other than just be forlorn over boys. And it had the representation that I never expected to have. Like, I grew up kind of in an environment where um, homophobia wasn't super, something that happened very distinctly. It was very subtle and I never really noticed it, but like growing up and seeing Sailor Moon normalize it, I never, like I probably because of that show I grew up and I was like, two girls liking each other, don't just, doesn't that just happen? Why are we having problems with it? I don't understand mm -hmm. everybody else. And just seeing that continued, uh, Pretty Cure has been very big for me. Futariwa was like, girls can look really cute, but also kick a lot of butt. Um, Hard Catch was great for me because of the shyness of Subomi and finally having a protagonist like that was super, super inspirational. Um, Shibokara, when I really did peel it back, just like I had a lot of... Um, personal self-esteem issues and having a show that did talk about choosing which like you aren't defined by one particular thing and that you can change and you can choose your aspects that matter the most to you and then make you up and you don't have to be stuck as one person and defined by that i think that most of the magical girls they teach lots of things to us and even us like i don't know i'm i'm an adult but i get I learn a lot with Precure, for example. I still learn a lot with Precure, I think. And, you know, especially like the recent, most recent seasons. I just, Absolutely. Like, just to finish, I think that um, uh, when Hukta was airing, it was a very tough time here for me and for lots of people around me here in Brazil. Uh, there were, like, it was an election year. And so we had a rise of a very problematic government and very problematic ideas started to come out of the shadows and started to be more open. And I remember that when Hukto, like when that was happening here, Hukto was airing and Hukto was showing Andi. And Henry. It, it was such a way to show that this message still needs to be out there. Mm -hmm. And it still needs to be shown in, in kids' show as well. And Precure being brave enough to do that, it was very, very powerful to me. And it really resonated with everything that I was living and how sometimes I think that like we're so close in our bubble that we don't understand it outside it. There are people that don't really have the same views as us in some specific aspects and then some basic aspects of life, like considering you a human being, <laughs> you know what I mean? And Definitely. so like, you know, it really got to me. It, it really helped me at that time. So like Precure has this power on me, you know, like an adult that every, everything that's discussed there we've seen in one way or another in another type of media before because we're mm -hmm. like at least i I'm, I'm old you know and i've watched lots of stuff but it brings right. such a different uh a different light and a different way of inserting that like with elena and star twinkle as well it was so beautiful <sighs> and you know so simple but so beautiful and i don't know i i feel like how would I have gone through that without Hucho, for example? How would I have gone through that? I would probably have. I would probably have, you know? But it helped me. It, it made things easier. And I was able to 
like obviously i had lots of like lots of people here like we were supporting each other because it was not and it's still not an easy time i think mm -hmm. but we were we were there you know we and hakta was also there for me and precure is always there for us i think you know especially I... being a show it's still still airing I just, I, I was blown away with Hakuto and Star Twinkle's just absolute progressive narratives that they put in there that I thought, well, maybe eventually Magical Girls would get that. No, they, they brought in Henri and they're like, you know, gender norms, Pfft, that stuff's stupid and like kicked it. I was blown away with how amazing it was and just like maybe some people in the audience are like, I'm not really into this, but for kids being raised and seeing that normalized is so important. And seeing Elena was so important for people. Just there is xenophobia in Japan and there's homophobia. And just to have a character introduced and done so politely and so naturally being like, hey guys, see these characters? That they want to be loved too. And we're like, we do love them. Yes, exactly. Oh my God, you summed it up perfectly, I think. You know, I'm a very bad person. Just try to sum things up. I speak a lot. D lies, oh, yeah. lies. You're great at summarizing things. Oh, oh my God, you are lying now. <laughs> Girl, please. You know, I, 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 I can't be concise, I think. I, I always speak too much. But, you know, I think you said it all. And, you know, I've seen on the internet, I've seen lots of talk at the time uh, of some people saying like when when Elena was shown for the first time and lots of people saying that it wasn't supposed to be like that and like why are they putting politics in it you know like for some people get out of here haters yeah like there for some people like having a character like Elena who is a person of color is politics and having a character like only is also politics you know and like i'm like come on like look at your surroundings there are people like that exactly. in real life there are people like, like there, that there are in kids life. in japan there are go there's going to be a kid in your class eventually that doesn't look the same as you and you need to be able to be polite and normal and understand that they have feelings like I get that some people are sitting there like, oh, this message is not for me, but it's important to somebody. This means so much to somebody. Seeing a guy, there's a guy out there who wants to watch Pretty Cure. There's some little Japanese boy, or there's somebody like Leo out there who just, it's nice to see yourself in the show and be like, hey guys, exactly. you know what? You being you, super cool. Yes, exactly. That's it. And that's, and I think that most of the times, like Magical Girls, they, they really send good messages all around. Obviously, there are problematic stuff in media in general, and there are going to be problematic stuff in Magical Girls as well. But overall, it's a great experience being a Magical Girl fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that this trend of just continuing to push past all the hate and creating a show that's for everyone continues to be there because I mean she was a good example of a show that got so much negativity and hatred and people were like don't even give it a chance and I'm like if you don't like it you don't have to watch it but she meant so much to me and all of these other things mean so much to me and there's no problem here it's not hurting you like let's let's have the love let's have the representation yeah, she yeah, Shira is another great example because like uh Shira is also a magical girl, like girl. She even has a transformation. She and, has a gorgeous transformation. Yeah, and like I, I still need to finish the last season. I'm on the half of it, and I'm like my heart is broken because it's over and I don't want to finish it, but at the same time. I cried every episode, so I I feel I feel your pain. <laughs> and you know, I think that uh Shira is such an important show in so many levels. And it's interesting because there was a lot of negativity when season one came out, but so much hate. So like sad. I think that the show was like okay, there is negativity, but at the same time, there are lots of people that are loving this show. So let's focus on them. Let's focus Me. on the people that are liking. Let's focus on the people that are you know giving like watching it and giving it audience on Netflix because that's important as well. You know those shows are not made. To only to send a message. They are made in a capitalist world 
in which they need to make a profit. So like this show was being watched. This show was being um, like people were Got a seeing season it. five. Yeah, exactly. Like with this, the amount of hate that you saw that we saw in like when it first came out and when the first, when the designs came out, you would think that this show wouldn't get very far. But then I think that instead they focused on the people that were liking the show and they made it with so much love and so much passion. And you can see that in every single episode, in the conversations, in the plots, everything. It's everything. Everything's very well crafted. And like sometimes there is going to be hate, unfortunately. There are going to be people that are going to hate some shows for many different reasons. But there are also people that are going to connect with that. There are also people that are going to enjoy that. And we, as the viewers that are enjoying it, we we should, I, I think that we shouldn't be afraid of the haters and we should try to send lots of love to the shows that are being done. And we should try to support them so that they can go on as well. You know, like Absolutely. five of a show, like this is something big, something big for a show like Shira. And I'm here for it here all the way for the ride oh my god t i think i stole a lot of your time today and i'm so Yo, sorry about steal it, it anytime this has been such a pleasure okay so now i found the word i wanted to tell you this is a dare i'm daring you to watch utana so that we can oh, record oh, ab- i will take that dare i'm not backing okay. down oh my god i love this Anyway, see, if people want to find you on social media or on your streams, where can they find you? Best place is Twitter for Noblest Tea. That's where I'm the most magical girl-esque. If you like, um, if you like art and magical girls, I do Magical Mondays on twitch.tv slash Noblest Tea. Any, any social media, it's just going to be Noblest Tea. I'm keeping it simple for you guys. Yeah, I want to thank you very, very, very much for being here tonight with me. I think that we spoke a lot and it was just a lovely conversation. We just, you know, ourselves sharing our passions and a little bit of our stories. Love memory lane. Thank you so much for being here. Bye-bye. Anyways, everyone, thank you so much for listening to us talk and babble a lot about magical girls if you enjoyed it please leave a like leave a comment and i also want to take this time to thank all of the magical girls that are members of the magical cinema channel and well i have to say thank you t for being a member as well and support him everybody support him oh thank you oh my god you've been such a big supporter since the early 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 day so thank you very much team (laughs) cinema oh god You're making me blush. Uh, Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.